critical visual analysis. So in this video, I'm going to be going through basically how the top universities in the world kind of approach looking at artwork and analyzing it in a critical way, asking questions and basically learning how to describe and look at different artwork to use for possibly academic writing, writing. This is where it comes in handy because it's technically, when you're like describing something and looking at something and you know how to do it, this is a form of primary research when it comes to academic writing anyways. So basically in English, that means understanding or trying to understand what the hell is going on when it comes to the contemporary art scene or maybe a historical piece as well. I'll be bringing up some different artwork to critically analyze throughout this video. So if you're not going to stay for the information, then stay for the artwork. So let's begin with my favorite contemporary painter, Adrian Gini. Now, before approaching artwork, you have to realize that there are many different angles you can take when approaching that artwork. So one of the best things you can do to begin is kind of start asking yourself some questions to realize kind of what direction you can take when approaching the artwork. Take this Adrian Gini piece. So I could ask myself, do I know the work of Adrian Gini? Is this a typical piece in regards to his work? So we can see that this uh, is a basically an abstract portrait that is clearly referencing Van Gogh, one of Van Gogh's self-portraits or possibly his series of self-portraits and it's built up in a rather collage-like way with each kind of separate piece of abstract shape kind of containing its own texture to build up that abstract portrait. Not only is this typical of Guini's imagery, this is also typical of his process because I know that Guini uses uh, collages as kind of a base to paint from and then which is why his paintings have kind of collage-like effects. But what if you don't know anything about the artist? You can't really kind of approach the work in that sense if you don't know anything about the artist. So what do you do then? Well, first of all, make sure you can physically see the artwork because there was that one time where there was an invisible art exhibition. So if you don't know the artwork is there, then you can't visually, visually analyze it. Jokes aside, we can start asking some basic questions such as what is the work from a medium perspective or a physical perspective? Is it a painting, a sculpture, an installation, a print? What are we actually looking at? And then we can go and look at describing that thing. After you've had a look and you've described it, then you can think about, okay, does this visual analysis of mine, could I draw out any meaning from this? Are there any cultural indications from the imagery or whatever you're looking at? And then on top of that, why do we care about this artwork in the contemporary context? Now let's go back to the Guinea piece and ask some more questions. So obviously with this Guinea piece, we can see that it is a painting and someone who's kind of very familiar with looking at paintings, to me, this looks more like an oil painting. I also know that it's an oil painting. But as for a uh, description, we can kind of expand on what we've already touched upon. So first of all, it's clear that the painting is a portrait painting, but I would say an abstract portrait that is clearly referencing the self-portraits of Van Gogh. We can see this through the use of blues and oranges alongside the clear cutting and pasting of certain elements of Van Gogh's work. Regarding the composition, we have a combination of many abstract shapes built up like pieces of collage with some looking more translucent, soft, and heavily textured than others. The paint looks like it has been scraped on or off the canvas, revealing colors beneath in certain areas, but at the same time, because of the structure and the cleanliness of the composition, it seems like the artist has an amazing control over the paint. Now, as for the meaning of this piece, okay, so we know that it's a reference to Van Gogh's self-portraiture. So we could see, okay, maybe the artist himself is doing some kind of abstract portrait, self-portrait through Van Gogh's character or imagery. So technically it could be a type of abstract self-portrait for the artist. We also know that Van Gogh had a pretty difficult and 
dark life, particularly towards the end, obviously he committed suicide. So when looking into the, particularly the eyes indicated in this piece, they look rather dark and sinister. So regarding identity, the self, possibly the artist is looking into kind of the sinister side in relation to identity or the human being. So as you can see, just kind of taking a step back and thinking about some basic things and questions, you can kind of approach an artwork and draw quite a lot out of it just from kind of some basic ideas. And bear in mind, not everyone is going to be able to do this instantly. Some people are very good at just like going boom. They have all this historical context in their head so they can analyze very quickly. I'm a bit more slow. I kind of sit back and have to think about things for a while. Usually in my university crits and stuff, I would be quiet for a while, look at the imagery, think about it. I wouldn't be the first one to speak, but I was always try. I always tried to aim that when I did speak, I had useful things to say, not just like, oh yeah, I can see you have blue in your painting. It's just like, thank you. Thank you for saying that I have blue in my painting. <laughs> also, please, just big red stop sign here. Realize that the language that I am using is not overcomplicated. It is simple English. You know, like a, a 10, 10 year old could really understand what I'm saying. Um, one thing I realize that is quite common in the art world slash some students will do this as well, is that everyone tries to overcomplicate the language that they use to describe their work or their concept with. And now they might think from their perspective that this is a, a highly educated thing to do and it makes them look so good. And from my perspective, no, uh, I just see insecurity about bad work and you're just trying to cover up with fancy wording. It's completely okay to have simple concepts and ideas and communicate them in a simple way with simple language. It's better to be clear than to try and communicate something that is simple in an alien way that no one is going to understand. So let's finish off with looking at a slightly different artwork before we finish the video. So this is a sculpture by Daniel Arsham and um, it's a, obviously a sculpture of the Pokemon Gengar. So it, it appears though he's obviously into popular culture. It is a very kind of, I guess, uh, clean sculpture that lacks color, but it appears to contain holes that have some kind of crystalline structures on the inside. Now, from a material perspective, this makes me wonder kind of, is the whole sculpture kind of made from crystal on the inside? Because then I start thinking, okay, from a material perspective, is this a very, very kind of expensive or costly work to produce? So obviously Gengar is referencing popular culture, Pokemon, um, but I guess in a, in a similar way to Gini, the artist is taking something which like isn't theirs, but then having a kind of contemporary reinterpretation, uh, maybe not even contemporary because Pokemon is also very valid now, um, but each artist is kind of taking something that isn't theirs and then reinterpreting it into their own artistic style. Now, as for the, I think one of the most mysterious things about this uh, sculpture from Arsham is that, I mean, particularly as a painter, I have no idea how you would put something like this together. As I said, I don't know if the whole thing is like made out of crystal or if he's getting these crystal sections and then embedding them into another material. Uh, sculptors, you help me out and try and kind of guess what the hell he's doing or if it's some kind of special cast technique that he's... I don't know how he's doing or if, if if he's casting the whole thing out of that crystal substance and then like mining some of it out i don't know how it's done but um it makes me wonder okay uh if i'm looking at that and there is a sense of mystery of okay how did he do that maybe this is something as well that the artist is intending there is kind of a you could say an aspect of mystery in relation to his work and process so before this video goes on for too long as you can see because i'm less familiar with arshan's work it is more, it's difficult for me to kind of dwell deeper into his maybe ideas, concepts, work. Um, I think there is, there is one thing that I did come across recently. I remember seeing this on Instagram and it was the fact that I think he's colorblind, which explains why the sculpture lacks any color. So this is kind of interesting things you can find out if you do deeper research on an artist or work. 
So uh, with that, I guess I hope that this video has been helpful when it comes to criti critically analyzing. Yes, I can definitely say that now. Um, artwork and I hope this will be helpful for whether you're doing casual academic writing or if you just want to think about different approaches or academic approaches you can take to looking at work. So um, with that I guess subscribe for more artistic content, like the video if it's been helpful and then uh, DM me on Instagram or comment if you have any more questions about anything artistic related slash just annoy me. And with that, here is my awkward goodbye.